Thank you everyone for um, joining our self-directed IRA and solo 401k live Q&A session. Uh, my name is Natalie with Sense Financial and we are a boutique financial firm specializing in self-directed retirement accounts. Um, Dimitri Fomachenko is here with me today. He will be answering all of the questions. Uh, Dimitri is the founder and president of Sense Financial Services. He uh, began his career in financial planning and real estate investing in 2000, and he owns multiple investment properties in uh, various states. He's also a licensed California real estate broker, and he holds the designation of certified IRA services professional from the American Bankers Association. Uh, over the years, he has taught hundreds of investment in financial planning seminars and has mentored thousands of investors. Uh, welcome, Dimitri. Thank you for uh, joining us today and taking the time to answer all the questions. Well, it's great to be here with you and uh, thanks for the introduction and uh, looking forward to diving into the questions. Yes, um, our first question here is from Keaton. Um, he would like to understand custodian fees for each real estate investments, like a passive apartment building. Uh, Keaton, uh, thanks for the question. Uh, to help you understand custodian fees for each investment you make with your self-directed IRA, uh, there are a couple of models when it comes to a self-directed IRA, there is a custodial self-directed IRA, and uh, there is a checkbook control uh, IRA. That's what our specialty is. And uh, with a custodial IRA, when you open an IRA with a custodian, uh, you make investments directly inside of an IRA, and uh, each investment and each uh, transaction that is related to the investment has a fee attached to that. So custodian charges a fee, obviously they're in business to make money and that's how they make money by charging you uh, investment um, asset-based fees and uh, transaction fees. Uh, those fees depend uh, on, on the custodian. Uh, every custodian has different set of uh, uh, fees, but uh, with a checkbook control model, you're able to eliminate all of those fees because the, the way the checkbook IRA is uh, created is uh, we set up a special purpose single member LLC. This LLC is owned by the IRA and it is managed by you. So you're the manager of the LLC and your IRA is the owner. Once this uh, vehicle is set up, you make investments not uh, using your IRA or a custodian, but you make investments directly inside of uh, an LLC. And you're able to bypass the custodian and eliminate all of the custodian fees. Uh, so those are the differences. And uh, hopefully that clarifies your question. Okay, our next question is from Billy. Do you need additional plan documents to open a designated Roth inside an existing solo 401k? Um, do we need uh, additional plan documents to open designated Roth account for a 401k? Well, it depends on the plan. As far as uh, uh, we're concerned, uh, every plan that is established by Sense Financial uh, comes with the Roth provision already built in. So those documents are already in. When a plan is created for a client, the ROT provision is there. Uh, you may not use it initially or ever, but it is there. So you don't need any additional plan documents uh, uh, for the designated uh, ROT account with uh, Sense Financial Plan documents. However, if you have existing plan, we'd have to review and, and see and, and in, in, in which case, you may need to modify and uh, get some additional uh, documents to get the route feature turned on. Okay, um, this question is from Natalia. How would I buy real estate in an IRA? Um, how to buy real estate in an IRA? Well, the process is pretty straightforward. The uh, main difference between um, a regular a conventional uh, retirement account, an IRA that you might have with uh, Merrill Lynch or Fidelity or Schwab is that those custodians, they limit your investment choices. And you, you 
don't have the ability to invest in alternatives such as real estate. You can only uh, invest in uh, um, uh, investments that are offered by the custodian, which is uh, stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. However, with the self-directed IRA, you have uh, virtually unlimited uh, investment choices. So uh, if you do have uh, a self-directed IRA already established, and you have the the power to invest in alternatives, then uh, first step is to identify the uh, investment that you wish to make. Uh, second step will be to uh, uh, make an offer and uh, uh, sign a contract. The contract will have to be in the name of an IRA or in case of a self-directed solo 401k will be in the name of the 401k. Uh, if it is a checkbook IRA, then um, again, the LLC will be utilized as the uh, owner of the investments. Uh, once the uh, agreement is signed, you will um, uh, submit an earnest money deposit uh, from your um, uh, IRA funds or 401k funds. And then you proceed with the escrow. Uh, if uh, you're uh, paying cash, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, if you're using leverage, you must use uh, non-recourse financing because as a disqualified person, you're not allowed to provide a personal guarantee uh, for the loan. Therefore, you cannot use conventional financing. Uh, we do have a list of lenders that uh, specialize in non-recourse financing for IRAs and 401ks. You can get that on our website. There's about a dozen of lenders uh, who specialize in this. You go through the process, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, when um, buying real estate inside of a retirement account, you personally don't qualify. The property must qualify. So therefore, lender is not looking at your credit, at your income, uh, your personal assets. They're looking at the property. Uh, typically, uh, the loan uh, requires larger down payment, 30 to 40% down. Uh, because the risk is higher for the lender. Once the, lend, the loan is uh, um, approved and in place, then uh, you'll proceed with closing. Uh, you want to make sure that the uh, title uh, to the property is taken in the name of a retirement account, whatever the case might be. And then um, finally, you will fund the purchase from, uh, from your retirement account. So again, pretty straightforward process, similar to buying a property just with your personal name again, except uh, the buyer will be a retirement account or whatever the entity related to that. Okay, this question is from Murugan. Um, How can I finance my son's mortgage using my IRA? I. Uh, can you finance your son's mortgage using your IRA? Well, the, answer, the short answer is no, um, you cannot. And let me expand on that a little bit because your son is considered a disqualified person to your IRA. And uh, to uh, help you understand, IRS has a list of the individuals uh, that they call disqualified. And those individuals is yourself, your spouse and your immediate family members, uh, your parents, grandparents, uh, your kids, grandkids, and their spouses. So remember a vertical line. So those uh, immediate family members are considered disqualified and IRS uh, specifically prohibits any transaction between a qualified plan and a disqualified person. So no transaction can take place between uh, IRA and uh, uh, your, your son. So that will be a prohibited transaction. That will not be possible. This question is from Frank. Um, he would like more information on how to set up and use a self-directed solo 401k to invest in real estate. Uh, Frank, uh, I believe I just addressed a, a similar question uh, about uh, buying uh, uh, real estate inside of an IRA. Uh, let me add uh, about setting up the account. Uh, I, I didn't talk about that. So when uh, 
uh, you made a decision that you wish to use your retirement funds for alter alternative investments, you need to decide what will be the best vehicle for you. There are a couple of different options. And um, uh, I always recommend that uh, you set up a call with one of our experts. Um, I'll be happy to speak with you myself if you'd like. And normally, when I talk to uh, potential clients, I want to put myself in your shoes. I want to uh, fully understand what your situation is. And then I'll tell you what I will do if I were you. So we can do the same thing and decide whether a self-directed solo 401k or a checkbook IRA will be the best vehicle for you. And then uh, uh, our team will uh, take you through the process of establishing the a plan and funding that once your self-directed uh, retirement account is set up and funded, then again, you can uh, follow the steps that I just outlined a few minutes ago uh, to uh, identify your investment opportunity and close on that. Um, next question here is from Jared. Um, where would I find more self-directed investments? Uh, where to find uh, self-directed investments where the, the opportunities are virtually unlimited. Uh, we are uh, uh, here at Sense Financial, we do not offer investment advice. Uh, so we, we can tell you what to invest in, but uh, uh, I'm an investor myself. I've been investing for the last couple of decades and uh, uh, I also have self-directed uh, retirement accounts that I direct and uh, uh, I'll be uh, happy to chat with you about uh, your situation and uh, share with you what I'm personally doing, what worked for me. Uh, I can give you some ideas, but ultimately you will have to make your own uh, investment decisions. But again, if you wish to uh, chat to me, I can uh, give you some pointers, some, uh, some ideas. Uh, go ahead and uh, schedule a consultation. You can contact our office. Uh, you can go on our website and uh, schedule a consultation there. And I'll be more than happy to chat with you and uh, try to guide you. Okay, Rich is asking, what is the minimum amount that I can contribute to my solo 401k per year? Are contributions from crypto okay? Uh, good question, uh, Rich. Uh, is there a minimum amount to contribute to 401k? Well, there is no minimum. There is maximum amount that you can contribute, uh, but there is no minimum. So uh, if there is a year that uh, for whatever reason you do not wish to make contributions to solo 401k, you don't have to you can skip uh, contributions entirely in a year. Uh, and then um, a follow-up question, uh, are contributions from crypto okay? No, that will not be okay. The contributions to a retirement account can only be made from your self-employed earnings uh, as far as solo 401k is concerned. Uh, so it has to be your self-employed compensation and you can only make contribution in cash. So you, you can't move existing uh, personal investments uh, to your uh, retirement account. Now, if you have um, income to justify the contribution, but maybe you don't have any cash uh, to contribute, you uh, and you have investments in crypto uh, that are personal investments, you can liquidate them and you can make a contribution to a 401k from those funds. But again, uh, you have to have um, income to justify that contribution. I uh, hope that helps, Rich. And before I, we move on to the next uh, question, just wanted to uh, remind you that uh, uh, we will be taking uh, uh, questions, any additional questions. Once we uh, exhaust all the questions that were pre-submitted, we are we're about two thirds uh, uh, into the questions. I got uh, about half a dozen more left. Uh, so, if uh, uh, and perhaps even uh, maybe some of the uh, discussion, some of the questions that we already addressed, maybe triggered some additional questions. 
uh, don't be shy and just uh, uh, feel free to ask that and, and I'll be happy to expand uh, on those or any other questions that you might have. Again, use the uh, uh, Q&A uh, section there. Uh, you should see it at the top left, I believe, of your screen uh, and just type your question there and we'll get to that after we uh, exhaust pre-submitted questions. Okay, um, question from Fred here. Um, do I need to fill out FinCEN for my LLC connected to my self-directed checkbook control Roth IRA? A good question um, about the FinCEN requirements. So this is a, a new law that uh, um, become effective uh, this year, starting beginning of this year. And that uh, applies to any LLC or a corporation that you own or control, in uh, uh, which case you are required to submit a report. It's called the beneficial owner information report. So you have to report to the government who's the beneficial owner of that entity. And that uh, law has been put in place to combat money laundering. If you have an existing retirement account prior to uh, January of this year, then you have until the end of this year to submit that report. If you uh, start in a new entity this year, then uh, I believe the rules are you have to submit that report within uh, 90 days. And this applies to any uh, LLC or a corporation, even if it is owned by your retirement account. Again, if you uh, own or control the LLC, in which case, uh, if you have a self-directed IRA with the LLC, you control it. And ultimately, you are the beneficial owner because that LLC is owned by your IRA and uh, uh, you're the beneficial owner of the IRA. So you have to report uh, that information. Uh, if you don't, uh, the penalties are extremely severe. The, the, uh, uh, the financial cost for failing to report can be high and uh, uh, even uh, a possible imprisonment for failing to report. So take that serious. We do offer uh, a service that if you need help, uh, submit that report, we can do it uh, on your behalf uh, and uh, uh, make sure you, you, you don't fail to do that. Because uh, again, the penalties are severe and that applies to uh, LLCs owned by retirement account as well. Okay, um, we have a question here from Mio Chan. Um, and they're asking, my current 401k has a loan. Can I transfer it to self-direct? Self uh, if you have a 401k that, that has existing loan, if it's an employer 401k with your uh, uh, employer uh, that uh, uh, you're no longer working for, uh, then that 401k technically is eligible to be uh, moved, to be rolled over. But if you have an outstanding loan, that loan needs to be paid off. Uh, because uh, if you don't pay off the loan and transfer, then that loan will be considered a, a, a distribution and, and you'll, have to, you'll, you'll be taxed uh, on that amount and possibly penalized. But uh, I will suggest that, again, you reach out to our office and um, let's take a look at the details. Uh, maybe I'm missing something, but um, uh, generally speaking, the loan needs to be paid off before you can move that retirement account, unless you have a, a solo 401k, which then uh, solo 401k, the loan can, you, you can keep the loan, uh, it just can be converted to self-directed. Uh, if it's an employer, uh, larger employer, and it's, if it's not um, your company, then uh, the loan most likely has to be paid off before you can uh, move that uh, 401k to a self-directed account. Okay, um, Wendy is asking, how does checkbook control work? What are the benefits? And can I directly deposit into the IRA LLC checking account? A uh, good question, Wendy. Um, how does the checkbook control work? Uh, well, again, uh, if it is uh, uh, an IRA, uh, 
you need a custodial account with a custodian that allows alternative investments, allows the LLC to be inside of an IRA. Uh, we'll set that up for you. We'll create an LLC. That LLC will be owned by your IRA and managed by you. You'll be the manager and your uh, IRA will be the sole uh, member of that LLC. So IRA will own 100% units of the LLC. The benefits of a checkbook IRA is that you have uh, uh, with this structure, you basically will be able to bypass the middleman, uh, the custodian. Uh, with the custodial IRA, you have to go through the custodian for each transaction. Uh, and uh, as a result, you'll experience delays, a lot of red tape and a lot of fees. And you're able to uh, eliminate uh, all of that by creating a checkbook IRA. When you uh, control the LLC, there is no middleman. Uh, custodian is still there, but they own the IRA. You just have an initial transaction with them. And after that, there is a just extremely minimal interaction with your custodian, except you have to report the value of the LLC to them on the uh, annual basis. But the, the main uh, benefit, again, is that you have the ability to control uh, investments and all of the assets of the uh, IRA on the LLC uh, directly. When uh, you identify the investment, you don't need to get anyone's approval. You simply um, make that investment decision. You can write the check and or wire the funds. That's how easy the investment can be made just by writing a check. Uh, all the uh, related expenses can be also made with uh, just writing a check or perhaps even using a debit card. Uh, it can be as simple as that. Uh, and final question uh, from Wendy, can I directly deposit into IRA LLC checking account? Uh, this is a little bit, this is a, not a full question. Deposit what? If you're talking about uh, depositing uh, investment income, then the answer is yes. So if your IRA LLC makes an investment and that investment produces investment returns, then yes, uh, all of the investment return must be going back into the IRA LLC checking account. You, you have no other option. Uh, if you're talking about depositing uh, contributions on IRA, then the answer is no. The contributions must be done on the custodian level. So it has to go through the custodian and then uh, as a next step into your IRA LLC. But that's, a, that's a simple step and you only do that once a year. Uh, any rollovers, if you have existing retirement account, that also will have to go uh, through the custodian. I uh, hope that helps, uh, Wendy. Uh, I, hopefully I understood your question. But again, if, if not, uh, you can uh, schedule a call uh, with myself or uh, one of our account uh, experts or uh, even um, uh, clarify your question uh, in, in the Q&A section. Okay, a question here from Danny. Um, I need a CPA that can file my California taxes. Mine thought they didn't need to be since it was an IRA. Uh, Danny, if you're referring to the um, IRA LLC on, uh, uh, in, uh, that is established in California or any other state for that matter, then um, uh, single member LLC is considered a disregarded entity. So uh, it doesn't uh, file taxes uh, on its own. It's everything is passed on to the member or the owner of the LLC. And in this case, the owner is the IRA and IRA is tax exempt. So IRA doesn't pay uh, taxes, uh, doesn't file tax returns. Uh, so in this case, uh, you don't have to file uh, taxes, but you uh, have to file or pay franchise tax. Uh, if it's in California, California and a uh, number of other states, they do assess franchise taxes and that's simply a uh, cost of doing business in the state. So those have to be paid, but not the income tax. 
Uh, so the income tax return uh, is not uh, required in this case. Okay, moving on to questions in the chat. Um, first question here is from Sophie. Um, in solo 401k, Sense Financial doesn't perform as a custodian. So will Sense Financial issue yearly reports for my solo 401k account? Uh, Sophie, you're correct. We are not a custodian. We are a document provider for the solo 401k. So I'm not sure which yearly reports you're referring to, but let me clarify the requirements. Uh, and there are, there are a few reporting requirements with the solo 401k. As a document provider, we are reporting your 401k as an active plan to the IRS. Uh, if you're using Sense Financial Plan documents, uh, once a year. So we do provide that uh, annual report to the IRS. But in addition to that, there are a couple other requirements that you required, uh, uh, that you're responsible for. Uh, number one is the annual report on the Form 5500EZ. And this is required if your plan assets, uh, total plan assets exceed $250,000. In which case you're required to submit this report. Uh, it can be done electronically or ca it can be done in a paper form. Uh, it's two pages, very simple um, uh, form. We provide uh, detailed instructions how to complete that. Um, we can do it for you also if you wish. Uh, that's uh, again required if your plan assets uh, exceed $250,000 or if you terminate the plan, then the final report has to be filed regardless of the total plan assets. And then uh, if you made uh, any contributions to the 401k during the year, you have to report that on your personal or business taxes. So again, those are three reporting requirements. One, uh, we're responsible for, the other two, you're responsible for. So make sure you understand the distinction. We have a question here from Jared. Um, where are the best places to find these types of investments? Can I use my, um, I can use my self-directed IRA for? Should I be looking for big investor event events or local groups? Well, Jared, again, um, we don't offer investment advice. There are uh, virtually unlimited investment opportunities out there. Uh, and um, I can't, tell you uh, where to find the best investments. Um, if you were to ask me and my personal experience, I think one of the best ways to invest your retirement uh, dollars is to do private lending. Uh, that's how I invest majority of my funds uh, in my um, retirement account. I think it's uh, great for uh, several reasons. Number one, it's passive. So you don't have to do any work. You just do your due diligence up front and then forget about this. Uh, you just get uh, uh, monthly interest payments deposited into your account. So uh, pretty passive and um, uh, hands off. Number two, it's low risk because your investment is protected by real property. Uh, I personally try to stay below 60% LTV, which is again, that's uh, in my opinion, extremely low risk. And then number three, you have nice double digit returns. Uh, but there are many other opportunities as well. Uh, our clients invest and in, they, they buy physical real estate. You can invest in uh, commercial real estate as a, a member of large syndications. You can do that. You can invest in development projects and, and on and on. I, I'm, I'm not an investment expert. Um, I have limited investment experience. Again, happy to share with you my experience, uh, give you some guidance on that, but uh, there are so many investment opportunities out there. You have to look at your uh, risk tolerance, at your goals, your time horizon, and based on that, uh, determine what will be best for you. So there is no one, uh, uh, right answer that will fit uh, everybody equally. It, uh, everyone needs to make their own investment decision. We have a question from Edmund. Um, can I transfer my current and active 401k funds into my self-directed IRA? 
will I need to close out the 401k or can I keep it open after the transfer? Uh, Edmund, uh, if you have uh, a 401k with your uh, existing employer, then uh, you are unlikely going to be able to transfer that because uh, typically 401k with the current employer have restrictions. So you have to talk to your uh, current 401k plan administrator to see and ask them this question. Can you do in-service distribution? In-service distribution means that uh, you're taking the distribution out of the plan while you're still employed, while you're still in service uh, for that employer. And if the answer is yes, perhaps you can do a partial transfer, then yes, you can move uh, that portion uh, from the 401k to an IRA and, and keep the plan. But if your plan administrator tells you that uh, no, you have to uh, wait for the qualifying event, which is typically either uh, a termination of service when you're no longer employed, uh, then you can freely move those funds out or you reach uh, retirement age. And uh, retirement age uh, for different plans can be a different number. Uh, it could be uh, 60 uh, years of age, 55 perhaps. I've seen some as low as 50. But again, you've got to talk to your, uh, this question is um, need to be asked of your current plan administrator. As far as uh, IRA concern, your self-directed IRA will accept uh, rollovers from any uh, uh, qualified retirement plan. Uh, if it's a traditional, of course, not, not from a RAT, but uh, also pre-tax funds, uh, there is uh, generally no restrictions there, but the restrictions can be on your 401k uh, and so um, direct your question to them. Um, next question is from Mora. Can you remind me of the rules around 401k contributions when you have an outstanding loan? Uh, rules about uh, 401k contributions with an outstanding loan. Uh, Mara, the the loan has nothing uh, to do with your contributions. Uh, those are two different things that are essentially unrelated to each other. Uh, if you have outstanding loan, you can make contributions. If you don't have outstanding loan, you can make the same contributions. The contributions are based on your, uh, uh, if you're referring to a solo 401k, it is based on your self-employed earnings, uh, your compensation. Uh, and uh, we do have a cool calculator on our website. So if you go to sensefinancial.com and then um, under uh, solo 401k menu, click on the contributions calculator. You need to know your compensation number and you just plug that in. You select the business type and then calculator will tell you exactly how much you can contribute. So it's pretty uh, a cool feature that everyone uh, who has a solo 401k plan should be utilizing. It will tell you exactly how much you can contribute. But again, your uh, if you have existing loan, it doesn't have any effect on your contributions. And another question from Mora. Um, I have an LLC and my solo 401k established with myself only. Um, if my business changes to include my husband, can I expand my 401k so that he can contribute as well? Uh, that's a great question, uh, Mara. Uh, if you are the sole business owner, uh, you're the sole participant. But if your spouse, uh, if you add your spouse to the business, then yes, your spouse can be added to, to your existing 401k. And essentially, you can double the benefits uh, as far as contribution limits, because uh, that's per participant. So you're Spouse will have its own contribution limit and will be able to contribute based on his compensation from the business. So, yes, uh, you potentially can double the, the, uh, the, the contribution limits. 
Um, Frank was asking for our contact information. I did type our phone number in. Feel free to call us for a consultation. Um, and then um, I also did put the website in the chat. Um, but but uh, a question from Fred. I own a truck. Um, I have a rental property in my IRA. Can I let my rental property manager use my truck for rental property purposes? Uh, Fred, uh, if you um, uh, have a personal truck that you own and you also have uh, a self-directed IRA, um, remember that you're a disqualified person and there cannot be any uh, direct or indirect transactions with your uh, IRA, between your IRA and a disqualified person. So that the truck is your personal property uh, your IRA is a retirement account and there cannot be any uh, transactions. So uh, if you have a property manager and they need a truck, they need to use other resources. You cannot use your personal truck for uh, anything related to your IRA. Uh, everything has to be arm's length. And arm, arm's length meaning, again, there is no direct or indirect transaction between a uh, disqualified person and uh, a qualified plan, uh, an IRA in this case. Another question from Fred. Um, if I purchase an item at an auction and pay with my IRA checkbook, then how um, do I get the item to my rental property? Uh, let me reread the question. If I purchase an item at an auction, well, what item are you talking about? Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure what, what item you're talking about. You can use your uh, a checkbook IRA to make investments only. You can just purchase items. You can, uh, uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm unclear, uh, Fred. If you can clarify here what item are you talking about, uh, we need a little bit more context to answer your question because again I'm, I'm a little bit puzzled here what item you're talking about here so give specific example um, moving on to the next question from Joshua can I have two assets in the same IRA for example a house and stocks uh, you certainly uh, um, Joshua can have multiple assets inside of the same IRA your IRA can own unlimited uh, assets, uh, essentially. You can uh, own uh, uh, multiple uh, real estate investments. You can have multiple uh, promissory notes. You can um, also invest in traditional assets, uh, stocks, mutual funds. Uh, so absolutely, there is uh, IRS. The, the only restriction that IRS has as far as the retirement accounts, uh, what uh, you cannot uh, invest in with your IRA, that will be collectibles. An example of collectible can be uh, uh, collectible coins, collectible stamps, um, uh, artwork that is collectible, uh, and uh, life insurance uh, contracts. So those are the only two investments that you cannot have in your IRA. And uh, last but not least, uh, any uh, transaction or any investment that uh, you related to personally, uh, your IRA cannot uh, own. Uh, for example, um, you can uh, own a rental property in your IRA, but your IRA cannot acquire a property from you personally or from your immediate family members. So if your parents own a rental property, your, your IRA cannot buy that property from your parents. Your IRA can certainly buy a rental property from unrelated person, just not from your parents. Um, the uh, prohibited transaction rules are pretty straightforward and uh, uh, there, there is so much flexibility, uh, but there are certain restrictions that you need to understand. Okay, um, we did get some clarification from Fred regarding purchasing the items at the auction. He clarified that he's referring to floor materials or paint uh, or a lawnmower. 
Uh, well, if you buy the floor material, I, I'm not sure where the action comes in uh, or lawn mower. You, you can't use a lawn mower. You can mow the lawn yourself. So you have to, somebody else has to do it for you. And uh, if you're buying a material, then again, you can do the work yourself. Uh, you will uh, um, have to hire someone to uh, purchase the material, to deliver them to the property and, and install them. can do it yourself. So you have to outsource all of that um, to somebody else. But obviously your IRA will pay for it. IRA can... Um, buy the material, uh, pay for them, and um, uh, you have the freedom to uh, designate who's going to be installing the material or doing the work on the property. It cannot be yourself or immediate family members, uh, but you control that. You, you can uh, manage uh, the project. It just cannot be personally involved. Um, next question here is from Sophie. Um, for the new contribution to Solo 401k, how can I report personal and business taxes? Uh, I'm not sure I'm following the question exactly here. Uh, the taxes are reported on your uh, personal and business tax return. So that's something that you got to discuss with your CPA. Uh, you provide the income to your uh, CPN, they, they'll do the reporting on the, on the tax return for your personal taxes and for your business taxes. Uh, not sure what it has to do with the contributions. Uh, you, you make contributions to the 401k, but taxes are reported uh, uh, with the help of your CPA on uh, personal and business tax return. A question here from Tom. Can I transfer my inherited IRA, which is below the tax threshold, not, ta not taxable, to a self-directed Roth IRA? Uh, can you transfer inherited IRA to, a self to your self-directed Roth IRA? Well, uh, there are two types of uh, uh, IRAs that you can inherit. Uh, there is a... Uh, an IRA that you can inherit from your spouse. And if you inherit an IRA from your spouse, that IRA becomes your IRA. So you can rename that, you can move it to your IRA under your name. Uh, if you inherit a Roth IRA from your spouse and you have a, a self-dated Roth IRA, then that Roth IRA that you inherited will become your IRA and can be moved to uh, your uh, self-directed Roth IRA. However, uh, if you inherit an IRA from anyone other than your spouse, then uh, uh, that will be an inherited IRA. It will not be your IRA. That IRA will um, uh, remain in the name of the deceased. Uh, you will be the beneficiary, so you'll control that IRA. Uh, you'll control that account. And uh, inherited IRA can be self-directed as well, uh, but you will not be able to move that IRA into your personal Roth or traditional IRA. If you inherit a, a Roth IRA from someone who's not your spouse, then that can be converted to inherited Roth IRA. Uh, if you inherit a traditional IRA, it's a traditional IRA. Uh, will you want to convert that to a Roth? That's a question to your CPA, because that's the only way to move a uh, traditional inherited IRA to a RAT IRA. It needs to be converted. But again, the key here, if you in inherit a retirement account from anybody who's not your spouse, it will remain in the name of the deceased, and it will be labeled as inherited IRA. It will not be in your name. Okay, uh, we do have a follow-up question from Maura. Um, do I need new plan uh, documents to include my husband? Uh, Maura, contact our office and your plan documents probably need to be amended uh, to make that uh, a change. Uh, it's not necessarily new documents, but uh, the plan documents uh, uh, need to be modified. 
Uh, but give us a call, contact your account manager, and uh, we'll help you make that happen. <clears throat> Okay, um, looks like those were all of the questions today. Um, thank you uh, everyone for joining us and for asking all the questions. Um, if there are any additional um, questions that come up, please contact our office um, and we'd be happy to help you set up a complimentary consultation. Uh, and once again, thank you for joining. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Uh, thanks Natalie and thanks everyone for joining us. And uh, Think of more questions and come join us next month. Have a good one.